Hello, it's Andy Gailey again here from Uptime Consultant Limited or Uptime Consultant Academy uh, with another thermal imager review. So I've already uh, reviewed one that's a, a starter instrument called the Pocket E. Um, so there's a video on this device, which is really good kind of toolbox tool for a few hundred pounds. Um, so go take a look at that. This is uh, going the next level up with uh, a thermal imaging device. These, I've been sent four images of different levels by a company called CBM Partners. And CBM Partners have reached out to me because I'm an independent. I don't deal in any instruments. I'm agnostic. I don't care um, what instruments people use. I will go and train people to use flur tools or fluke tools or... Uh, I'm interested more in the knowledge sharing, so that's where I sell. I sell knowledge, and I'm really interested in anything I see new. And this was kind of new to me, so I said, yep, yeah, let's go and um, review these instruments. So, I think you probably know already through the title, it's uh, from a company uh, based in China called Hike Micro. There's a silent E in here for us English speakers. It's not Hick Micro, it's Hike Micro. They are a huge company that um, does lots of surveillance cameras, um, thermal images for military use, um, thermal binoculars, thermal sites for um, military use. Uh, but they also do, do these industrial images. So this one is from the M series. Um, it comes with its own certificate. So it's a an M11 and it comes with a starter book well you can pretty much um, get this online just by going and, and searching for Hick, Hike Micro M series and you'll find it I haven't got actually the 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 charger because that's downstairs with the spare battery in it because we used this in the factory yesterday and it's about half depleted after a couple of hours so the battery is actually in this one last for um, six hours before I need a recharge. So really you've got, if you've got two charge batteries, you've got a, a 12 hour charge there. So that's where the, obviously the uh, 240 charger would sit. And then we've got other jurisdictions, plugs. I'm in the UK. So <clears throat> uh, it's a really good case. It's like a Peli case, but not a Peli case. Uh, it seems, yeah, it seems well made. Uh, it's kind of a harder thermoplastic than you would get on a pellet. Um, but it does what you want. It stores a tool for you to put in the back of your car or carry around a factory. So we'll put that to one side. Um, this is the, <coughs> the camera, the M11. Let's start off with storage. So it has uh, the, the other one we looked at, the Pocket E, had obviously its own onboard storage of four gigabyte. This has got a micro SD card in here, and then we've got an output here. Um, and then this goes on here, which is okay. The lens is uh, is covered by this flap, which the most important part, obviously, we don't want to touch at all is the sensor lens on any thermal device. So this actually is quite a tight fit in there in this rubberized edge. Flips right back. And what we've got here in the center there is the IR sensor lens. On the left here is a, a light so we can illuminate a panel or we've got dark spaces. On the right hand side here is the visual lens so it will take a, a visual record as well, if you want, or you can turn it on and off. And then we've got a laser, class two laser in the middle. So if we need to make sure of our center spot of where we're targeting, that's what we do. Trigger, so it's a trigger handle. So obviously you press this once, it will capture an image, hold it, and it will capture a video, video until you press it again. Uh, it's kind of thermoplastic, hard shiny rubberized housing around the the screen and the handle lanyard i always recommend wear your lanyard because if you do drop it 
you uh, <coughs> at least you're going to be saved by the lanyard. Usual kind of NICAD cells. Uh, you get two with the instrument and a, a dual charger, which is, as I say, is downstairs charging one of the batteries. Manual focus ring, so like an old SLR camera. To be honest, when I'm using thermal images at a manual focus, I tend to want to be about six feet away from what I'm looking at. Um, and once I've focused it, I, I pretty much would change my body position to get in focus rather than keep messing about with the focus ring. Um, I always want to be a regular distance away from things really. One and a half meters is my kind of choice. So on the front here we've got some manual buttons. So on the Pocket E we didn't have any manual buttons, it's all touch screen. This has got a touch screen as well. Touch screen is covered by the protector. Of course this doesn't belong to me, it belongs to CBM Partners. So I want to keep it nice and clean. Um, on off button here, so we press this for a couple of seconds and we should get the hike Hick Hike Micro, Hick Micro, Hike Micro, I've got to learn that. And it comes on, you can see it here, it click, it's kind of calibrating itself. It's, you know, we can now see, we see it's this, the side of that mouse map there. The field of view, one thing I'll say about this, the field of view on this one uh, really took me by surprise because it's, um, let me just look at this. The field of view is 19 by 14 degrees. So that's quite tight. Uh, and that means you've got to, you've got to stand back from what, what the, the, the target. It's got a 25 hertz refresh rate. Um, so that's the same as the Pocket E. So that's for your refresh on your video. And it's the sensor size. We can pretty much see what the sensor. If you see a sensor like that size, you know it's going to be quite small. It's 192 by 144. Uh, pixels so not very uh, high resolution um, but we've got that super IR function on here which can times that by two so it goes up to 384 by 288 pixels this one the the pocket e went up to 350 degrees c this one will go up to 550 degrees c now i don't work anymore in the turbine industry so i'm not really interested in anything that's going to go above 200 degrees C, to be honest. Uh, most of the ovens that I look at kind of go up to 260, maybe. Um, so, yeah, it's good. It goes down to minus 20. I've never actually looked at anything in the minus realm anyway. And they say there's about six hours of charge on a battery. Um, we used this for a couple of hours yesterday in a factory. Um, and... The, the the guys, the four technicians that used it and myself, we really liked that it was kind of 680 grams in weight. Uh, you didn't feel that it was too heavy. Uh, obviously, when you're pointing this at anything, it's usually at arm's length, so you've got kind of that hanging off the end of your arm. So let me just show you um, some of these physical buttons here. And this, this is, does has a does have a touch screen as well so we can go to the menu here let's look at the settings so press that we we'll do manual we can do a mixture of both so temperature range i've got it set obviously a low temperature range up to 150. i've got emissivity of 0.95 because that's that's basically what i was looking at um depends on your material and your surface finish we've got um reflective temperature 25 we're looking the middle distance so if we press that one to uh, three meters humidity of 50 percent and then we've got some alarm settings we can set down there or we can do our our span of our temperature and the level of our temperature uh, manually in in here um, connections i've actually used this on hotspot so I've, what you do is you connect this hotspot here connect this hotspot here and then um, you can download images from the file. I haven't used the Bluetooth, I haven't used the wireless function on it. Um, display settings in here, so I've got everything turned on, so that's, we will see the brand logo, the parameters, the time date and the status. Got some capture settings here, and this is about the visual image, so we can have, I've got 8 megapixel, we can have it down to 2 if you want. Um, and you can have this 
you can also save visual image off if you're not interested in that um, and device settings you obviously can set the units to imperial uh, fahrenheit celsius for temperature or you can have it feet or meters obviously meters for me uh, screen brightness you can set so the device settings are all pretty straightforward uh, we return here by this button this return button <coughs> and then we can see here we can cursor along next one is album so that's what we've already done so we can look at the album and maybe see some images that um, captured yesterday so let's take a look at that uh, that first image there so this was a um, a hot oil pump and you can see that it was picking up that center position there p1 that 145 145.8 degrees c yesterday at midday uh, so you can see the kind of resolution it's not it's not the best resolution in the world but i think it's good enough to be honest the main thing that i me personally i think is that the the focal um field of view is compromised because it's too tight uh, if we go on to image mode we've got it on fusion so because fusion mixes the uh the thermal with the visual to give us an outline you can have parallax so if we want if we depending on what distance we're out of the way we can can we can change that parallax so that the two images um, converge perfectly in here i like fusion because it gives me i can see machine labels and things like that um, picture and picture is also a favorite of mine because uh, i can then concentrate on uh, just say a motor that or a bearing i'm interested in in this picture so with picture and picture you will see the thermal image in the in the middle there and then if we go to where should we go to next let's go to the next one long is measurement so we can put in uh, we can clear it here at the end we can put in um, a measurement point there we can put in a spot there we can put in uh, a line a circle or a rectangle rectangle is really good it gives you an average temperature of the the rectangle so you can put a rectangle around a motor we're going to put one of these on so we can put hot spot cold spot or center let's put center on so put center on and let's also put hot spot on let's come back and now we've got um and you can see there we've got a couple of cursors trying to find hot and cold spots and in the um top there we can see that the maximum and uh, the point point one let's go back we've got a laser point here then we're about to see this so we've got a laser pointer so that's good if you're looking in a panel and you actually want to see a connection you're going to be uh, looking at then the laser pointer is good to <clears throat> to have uh, up the top here if we press that we get the lamp to come on so the light comes on press that off and then this one down the bottom here you can see there's a there's a kind of a plus magnifier here we can go in here and we can start Let's put this so we can see see that we'll put that there um, we can start to digitally zoom in up to eight times the only issue with that obviously is is a digital zoom so you don't get any more resolution uh, it's something that I don't I don't know whether I'd ever use it because it's not going to enhance my resolution but if I'm far, far away, you never know. I might want to do that. Um, what else can we look at? We can uh, manually calibrate here. If we need to calibrate for some reason. Um, let's go back into... So yeah, let's go and look at the, the palettes. So palettes are uh, the visual res representation that we'll get. I, I'm old school and I stick with kind of rainbow and iron bow. Um, 
some people like these are the fancy let's have, put my hand there again and let's actually let's go uh, let's go to um, let's get one full film let's go to fusion and then let's go back to palettes so if I put my hand down here you can see the different palettes as we go along and you can have white hot or black hot uh, there's I think there's eight eight palettes there and then up the top here we've got other parameters we can put in where we want to look above or below uh, a certain level so let's come out of there a minute let's, well, let's go back to I don't want that <clears throat> picture and picture again into palettes oh, I'll go back to rainbow there you go we can obviously do this on the touch screen touch screen is quite um, intuitive now uh, here we've got auto i've got it in auto but you can go manual if you want and then you can wind uh, the the mean point up or down and uh, you can also change the the span by uh, putting the top and bottom temperature uh, further apart we can okay that on the go back so that's all there is to say about it really um I think it, it the thing that impressed us yesterday was the weight for a start the weight the folk the field of view people saying on the focal length it was the field of view that was the problem we had to be further back than we wanted to and you'll see uh, I'll put a, a comparison when we do the M11 against the M60 you'll see what I mean um, so yeah you can take video as well if you hold this this trigger it will take video so i think that's it for now uh, this retails um i think i've seen it for about 1200 pounds so that's the kind of value if you want to know more about uptime consultant you can find me here uh, these instruments were lent to me by a company called cbm partners who i believe are going to become a distributor for hike micro in here in the uk so thanks very much to the cbm partners and i hope you've enjoyed this video thank you